بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپریٹ گورننس اینڈ ان دا پریویس سیشنز وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ پرسپیکٹوز ڈائمینشنز ایسپیکٹس کمپلیکیشنز امپلیکیشنز اینڈ دی امپورٹنس آف کارپریٹ گورننس ایز اے ہول ٹو کانٹریبیوٹ ٹوورڈز گلوبل اکانمیز نیشنل اکانمیز اینڈ دی سیلف سسٹینیبلٹی آف این آرگنائزیشن وی ور سیئنگ وٹ از دا رول آف اے ڈائریکٹر اینڈ ان دیٹ اینڈ ان دوز سیشنز وٹ وی سو از دیٹ دا ڈائریکٹرز basically are elected by the shareholders and then those directors appoint the different chief uh, officers and the CEO and there are committees of the directors which overlook the functionality of the organization and therefore they carry a very very important role. Now today we are going to move forward and further see that what are the requirements to be a director, what are the different stipulations to be a director, what is their legal standing and how they are appointed. Now, when we look at this, then we see a director, maybe a full-time working director, managing or whole-time director covered by a service contract. So, again, it could be contract-based, managing things a whole-time, and that would be a full-time managing, and whole-time directors are in charge uh, of the day-to-day -day conduct of the affairs of a company, and are together with other team members collectively known as management of the company. So, again, these managing directors or different directors They basically represent the board, but are running the organization on day-to-day -day basis and also interfacing with the rest of the management. And therefore, there is a direct involvement into the organization. And in lieu of that, they are also paid market-based salary. So that is extremely important in addition to the share or the dividends that they are going to be getting when the company goes into profit. So uh, this is a very important aspect. Many companies may also have non-executive directors who do not have anything to do With the day-to-day -day management of the company, they may attend board meetings and meetings of committees of the board in which they are members. So again, they have a little bit of a distant relationship. They are members of the board. They are rectifying many decisions which cannot be taken by the managing director or by the chief executive officer. They are giving a strategy. They are giving direction. They are giving destinations. And they are also members of the, uh, of the management committees. And those management committees could be a human resource committee, could be a finance uh, committee, could be an audit committee, uh, could be uh, a committee related to communications, uh, could be a public relations committee. So all of these different committees are then headed by the different directors and they oversee uh, their responsibility. But they are not paid and therefore they are not full time. They are the ones who keep on uh, giving uh, their advice and also tend to mentor the organization towards a better management system. Uh, according to Section 153 of the Companies Act 2017, a person shall not be eligible for appointment as a director of a company if the following stipulations are not met. So, if we look at them, if someone is a minor, uh, is of unsound mind, has applied to be educated as an insolvent and his application is pending, is an undischarged insolvent, has been convicted by a court of law for an offense involving moral turpitude, has been debarred from holding such office under any provision of this act. So what we see is that if any stipulation is not met, then that individual cannot become a director of that organization or corporate body. So these are very, very important stipulations and they have to be followed in toto. That means completely by any organization because they form the very essence of directorship. Uh, additionally, is lacking fiduciary behavior And a declaration to this effect has been made by the court under Section 212 at any time during the preceding five years and does not hold national tax number as per the provisions of Income Tax Ordinance 2001. So uh, these two stipulations are also very important that if a director is involved in any of this, then he or she cannot become a director of that particular company. Uh, the legal position of directors as agents and trustees emanate from the fact that a company being an artificial person cannot act in its own person. company can act only through the directors who become their agents in the transactions the company makes with others. So just like mentioned to you earlier, uh, what we see is that the legal standing is that the directors are agents and trustees because an artificial person cannot act on its own as a person and company can only act through the directors uh, who become their agents in the transactions of the company. So uh, because of this, uh, the responsibility and uh, the uh, different aspects of a director basically tend to uh, emanate. Uh, we also see that directors are deemed to be trustees of a company's money and properties 
directors are not only agents but also act as trustee so the director has a multiple role director agent and trustee and therefore it's a very important role and it is important that the directors uh, have certain duties to discharge uh, so again the responsibilities of the directors are uh, number 1 uh, there are fiduciary duties number 2 duties of care skill and diligence number 3 duties to attend the board meetings and number 4 duties not to delegate their functions except to the extent authorized by the act or the constitution of a company and to disclose his interest so these are the responsibilities which have to be discharged by a director and they have to ensure that they do things according to that uh, according to section 154 of companies act 2017 only a natural person shall be a director other than that a director must be an individual be competent to enter into a contract and holds a share qualification so these three stipulations tend to become very important and they tend to give a legal uh, structure and a legal protection uh, to the director and that is very important so what we see ladies and gentlemen is that the position of a director is very important uh, the responsibilities of a director are extremely important because uh, he or she has to overlook uh, the main functions of the organization either as the board or as uh, the chair of a particular committee or as a member of a particular committee and then most importantly what we see is is that there are certain stipulations uh, which the director has to meet and if those stipulations are not met then that person cannot be appointed as a director to the organization and all of this basically ensures more transparency more ensures more merit oriented uh, decision making and ensures the fact uh, that uh, the directors are the ones who are driving the institution and no one is driving it in uh, proxy which is extremely important and at the end what we see is is that uh, a director is a national person and is an individual is competent to enter into contract as a qualification so all of these uh, dimensions are extremely important and must one must keep in view uh, these dimensions whenever formulating a board or ensuring that the board is practicing uh, the contents of the articles of association and articles of memorandum in the best in the best possible ways thank you so much tani